if you were to say block this one with a little bit of moisture uh, then what will happen is it's saying the collector box is full of water and of course you have a trap here clear the trap whatever you need to do to make sure that happens but this switch gets moisture in it you really should replace this this switch I mean how many times has that happened and what kind of debris and what kind of caustic damage has it done to this particular switch I would replace this switch this particular switch being on the inducer still can get moisture in it even though that's pulling a vacuum and sucking out and this is a negative pressure in here when this shuts down guess what happens you know I don't care where your pressure switch is located you can still get moisture in the pressure switch and that moisture contains the caustic chemicals of the gases so it's definitely going to play havoc on the pressure switch now all of that being said don't try to calibrate or recalibrate a pressure switch that came with the furnace there is a reason it failed so I would not do that what I would do is replace the switch okay now that is if it's bad test it uh, the proper way to test it of course is with the DDSM1 draft simulator the reason behind that is because it creates a consistent controlled draft that will actually enable you to accurately test the switch the pinch method even though you can come close doesn't tell you anything about what's going on inside the switch and like I said before just because it closed doesn't mean it's good um, the other thing is when you're going to go out into the into the field and you're going to purchase a, a an adjustable pressure switch that you can calibrate there are several different styles that are out there this one is is small uh, it has multiple footprints basically multiple mounts and um, you can do a um, dual pressure switch on it let's talk about dual pressure switches dual pressure switches you'll see positive and a negative on the pressure switch it's really not what you think positive and negative okay there's one diaphragm in here there's one spring in here that's all there is so if you're testing a dual pressure switch test the negative side that's going to give you all the information that you need so test that side the other thing is when it's hooked up to the, the furnace what you'll see is one side's hook, hooked up to either the collector box or the inducer and the other side is tied into the burner or the gas valve and the burner box now what that does is if one is creating more pressure or draft than the other it's going to make that pressure switch bellow so it's going to go one way or the other and it's going to shut that furnace down like I said the purpose of the pressure switch is to shut the furnace off that's important that you know that all right I wanted to show you this particular pressure switch uh, from Honeywell this is a 1.11 WCPF now I want you to pay attention to that WCPF that means inches of water column on pressure fall so it must open within the rating of 1.11 now that being the case like I said before it's got to close within the 10 percent rating as well so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you the inside of this particular pressure switch and you can see that it comes with a spring and on the other side of the spring of course is where the adjustment screw is and you can see this is where the tubing actually connects on the other side so we have this spring then we have on this side of course we have the diaphragm and this particular diaphragm built like the other ones only the siliconized uh, diaphragm is is clear and you can see on this side it has the stem basically that goes into um, and makes contact with the pressure switch uh, with the micro switch inside okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in and show you this is basically the same pressure switch 
as the adjustable pressure switch that I've been showing. Now, if you pay attention to this, we do have the bleed port. And if you notice on this particular one with this adjustment screw, they've put some silicon in here. Now, like I said before, you could recalibrate this switch if it was out of calibration, but that could really void your warranty because you're messing with something that is preset. Now, I wouldn't recommend going and doing that. That would be that would be a bad idea. Plus, you never know what's going on on the inside of this particular switch. I mean, you could it could be way out of calibration because of the moisture, debris, like I said, holes in the diaphragm, or the bleed port being partially plugged or plugged, and that could cause everything to go out of calibration. So I'm going to go ahead, and uh, this is a really nice pressure switch, but like I said, it's the same as our pressure switches that we have that are adjustable. So you can see the set screw, this adjustment screw, and it's pretty much the same. Um, and it's pretty much the same switch. So basically that's why I'm saying you can go ahead and if you're gonna use one of these, you know, go ahead and calibrate it exactly to the setting that you need to be and um, set it and forget it. It's a really nice switch. So Basically, as a reminder, what I wanted to say is if you have a system under warranty and you have an adjustable pressure switch, you can field calibrate it precisely to the setting. Go ahead and put it in if you need to and return, replace it with the no EM. Keep yourself in that warranty. Um, but that being said, there's nothing wrong with keeping the adjustable in there. It's going to work perfectly fine. Um, the other thing is, on adjustable pressure switches, there's three or four different versions of these out there. Some of them have bleed ports, some do not have bleed ports in them. Make sure that when you do get one, it's for the furnace, okay, not for ductwork. Uh, the ones for ductwork don't have bleed ports in them. Most of them do not. They don't need to. Uh, you're doing small measurements, they're really tiny, and you're, you don't have that velocity that you're going to have with the inducer, so a lot of them are designed without a bleed port. Uh, make sure that it is specifically designed for the furnace and it's UL approved. I would highly recommend that. There are some that do not have bleed ports on them that are in furnaces as well. So pay attention to that. Um, and most, for the most part, those are just trying to prove whether or not there is any draft at all. Okay. Now, if you were to plug the bleed port and your inducer is cranked up like pulling an inch and a half, two inches of water column, and you plug the bleed port on a 1.11, pressure switch, it's going to act like it's a 0 0.30 or 0 0.40, okay, even lower. So that being the case, if your heat exchanger is partially blocked or your uh, flue is partially blocked or even blocked, your furnace is going to continue to run under those conditions. So I'd highly recommend that you check that bleed port as well.